morning. Welcome to Spice Morning. And for cricket fans, I'm sure it's not a nice this morning that you certainly want to wake up to. So to wake up to a morning where you turn on the television and hope that you see big scores and pretty batting. But we don't need to repeat the score. Let's hope Pakistan does what's done with the Indies, if that is humanly possible. Good morning to you again, wherever you are in Grenada, Karakou, and Pili Martinique. Welcome to Spice Morning for March the 23rd. We want to wish you a productive day and certainly a blessed day. To those of you celebrating a birthday today, the 23rd of March, we say to you a pleasant good morning again and happy birthday to you. And hopefully that friends will remember you and do something very honorable for you on this day. And to those of you who are celebrating an anniversary, wedding, or whatever it is, we wish you well and hope that this will be a rekindling of the memories and thinking about the future. And in terms of the world of sports this morning, I'm sure we are, well, disappointed at this stage. Glass West Indies 84 for, seven, for 8, Chandler Paul still there. Um, 80 balls, well, best. It would have been better for the, uh, the other batsmen to be there. And the score is 80 for, 80 for 3 from 30 overs or 40 overs and 84 for, what, 8 from 36 overs. Let's keep our fingers crossed that our bowlers will make up for the batters. Uh, morning to you, Jimmy. Pastor Stanford Simon is on holidays. And uh, let me just tell you, we're going to have with us this morning Superintendent Trevor Modest during the course of the morning. We're going to have with us Patricia Benjamin also. And um, towards the end of the program, we'll have with us the president of the Grenada Trade Union Council. This weekend, they're having their annual congress, a biannual congress, and we'll hear, get an insight into what the congress would be like. Morning to you, Jimmy, and welcome. Morning, Ray. Thank you. Morning, everybody. I was telling you a while ago, I'm sure your father would be glued to the television set. <laughs> but not in laughter. Must be no, disappointed. I think everybody must be. Yeah. Gravely disappointed. Yeah. What what a what a, a letdown I think. Yeah, I spoke to Doctor Wilshire yesterday. In fact, he called me. <laughs> he said to me, "I told you so. They're gonna get in to the final." I said, uh, "He said we play in Pakistan. We should win." So, Doctor Wilshire, if you're listening this morning, if you're viewing this morning, I certainly hope that um, your chemistry and your <laughs> physics can work in favor of the West Indies bowlers when they fire against mm. the Pakistanis later today. We have to keep hope up on that one. Right, and Pastor Sanford is still vacationing. If he refuses to come to church on Sunday. It's a serious <laughs> holiday. Serious He's holiday. abandoned me every Wednesday. And <laughs> so, so uh, this is two weeks or three weeks? This is, this might be the third, you know. Third week. It might very well be the third. You can have one of a month holiday. It's a month, yeah. Th right. This is probably the third, yes. It's probably the third. Mm -hmm. So next week, and then we should see him in April. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, I, I yeah. hope after you energized and <laughs> refreshing yourself and getting ready for resuming mm -hmm. work. <laughs> Too early for retirement. So what are you going to read for us this morning? Well, um, I've been looking at the the world again. All right. That's good. And new developments. You see Australia is having demonstrations. <laughs> Canada is having uh, fun and games. There may be another general election because of the whole thing with cost of living. Um, it's in Grenada, they propose demonstrations coming up by the opposition <laughs> on cost of living and unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, Portugal is having demonstrations again because they go to implode. I think the government may collapse there. And we see the, 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 the whole Middle East and the rest of the, thing, the, the world where people have been demonstrating or taking much more severe action against leaders. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for something in the Bible that would probably help us to understand if this is really the right thing to do or how far one should go right. when one is is um, governed um, uh, by your prime minister or your president or as the case may be. And I found a passage from the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. And I'm reading, I'm reading from the New King James Version because I found um, the, the, the way it's written is very appropriate. And it says as follows, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. 
Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable to you. So obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls and look after you as those who must give an account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable to you. <laughs> I was thinking about obeying leaders who are, the Bible says, you must obey them. But when do you cease obeying them? What, where is the, what is the dividing line? That's correct. I know this is interesting. This is interesting. Yes. It, needs, it needs to be unfold. Yes. Yeah, it needs to be unfold. How, how far does one go? Are, are yeah. the demonstrations that said that, or uh, the marches that are planned in Grenada, is that how far you go? Is that legitimate? Do you go further, like in Libya and Egypt mm -hmm. and Bahrain, and etc.? Do you go as far as they're going in Australia at the moment? What is, how far does one, or how, how, how far do the actions of leaders in the country, um, how far can they go before there is challenge, before one is no longer justified in obeying those who rule over you? And the conclusion is, I'm trying to pick up the conclusion. Well, this is, it says, they watch, you must obey them because they watch out for you mm. as those who must give account. Now, I think that's important yeah. because, the, in, in my view and what I've read, the leaders have a responsibility for those over whom they're in charge mm -hmm. and they have to give an account. And that account, at the end of the day, is to God for their actions because that's the ultimate, um, the ultimate person or power to whom one is accountable at the end of the day. And um, so, therefore, they should act in a way that is accountable and if they deviate from that I'm of the opinion that is when their subjects are entitled and justified in no longer obeying them but the extent of that disobedience will depend on the nature of the leaders actions insofar as they, are they stray from uh, principles of good governance. Interesting because, yeah. <clears throat> to me, a lot of it has to do, in my opinion, with a lot of dishonesty. In, because, you know, I, somebody who I admire gave a ride this morning, and, uh, you know, coming up, we were talking about work ethics that they seem to have disappeared. You talk to most people, and they talk about less borrow, and, you know, a gentleman who manages one of those major stores in town was saying, saying to me also, but people talk about borrowing, but who's going to pay it back? At some point in time, it has to be. Yes, I can see we need to um, maybe make a lot of adjustments, but I feel much of what's happening, and particularly to me in Grenada, is that I don't think we have a workforce that really wants to work as, let's say, I will go back as far as the PRG days. I won't go even before that because it was perhaps even more productive. But the point I'm making, um, much of what is happening there today, to, uh, to me, uh, people, seemingly a lot of people, um, I don't know about the Middle East, but you look at the Caribbean. You know, I've just been to a couple of the islands up the road there. And the economic situation is perhaps no better than here. But to me, all you're hearing is like, you know, get and borrow and do something rather yep. than saying to folks. Well, the gentleman even made a point uh, to me, I suppose his age would, would speak that he knows about agriculture and he's from the agriculture area. He says, you know, one of the things, Ray, many decades ago, agriculture absorbed the workforce. But quite clearly, we know there's no banana, cocoa, and nutmeg as before. But there are opportunities, and I mean, we're importing bananas. And nobody's yeah. saying to us <clears throat> as well, let's do something. Um, marketing board manager says he's paying what one twenty five a pound. He's looking for bad. You may not make a million, but it's an opportunity to make something. So I often say to myself, you know, uh, uh, are we really telling people what they want to hear because it sounds you know sexy, rather than seeing the thing that may hurt but will mm. bring us a better day? Yeah. Well, no leader really wants in of a country really wants to say things that really hurt because. They're on a popularity trip, you know, they want to really be be liked by everybody. And that's that's fatal in so far as leadership is concerned. But you no. read a piece a 
week or two ago yes that um uh, that is not going to bring us no 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 and even these planned um marches by the opposition well i think they're a good thing to to you know keep you need opposition to keep a government on its toes but also i think they've got to be careful that the um the people aren't misled into thinking that the government has to solve every problem. You know, we can't get away from the fact that energy prices are gone up, so gas prices had to go up. But you know, before the, when gas prices was fairly low, people were just gallivanting up and down, doing nothing with their cars. You know, wasting wasting fuel. I think, quite frankly, between you and me, that the price of fuel is too low. <laughs> right? I know it's going to affect public transportation, but their mechanisms one can put in place to deal with that. Mm. But you can't t say we, we are justified in trying to bring our government down just because the price of fuel is up. I mean, that's a world issue. It's not our mm. issue. But there are things one can do, you know? So people must not be misled, which is my point, into thinking and believing that it's up to the government to do everything. They have to encourage people to make use of, of, of the resources that we have. I but I quite agree approach. with you, you know. I quite agree, you know. As I said, much of it, you know, I, I, I listened a bit in Antigua what day it was, and some kids was up there for a couple of days, and uh, you know, uh, to me, as I said, I asked the question. I mean, is this the best talent left in the Caribbean? Mm -hmm. Because to me, it's you know, it's uh, men who are supposedly, well, pe well, whatever qualification, but I find you know it obviously don't make much sense because clearly. Um, I don't know that you can f replace um, the oil that we use for commercial business with seawater. Yeah. I mean, we can't replace <coughs> it. So I, I think the piece you have there this morning to get back mm -hmm. to the relevance of the piece, it speaks about accountability. Yes. And uh, accountability, I suppose, does not only mean that you in management, you at another level also to have to account for your structure, whether as a worker, as a manager. Everyone has to, right. yes. So I think, to me, that is what is happening. The, the words of honesty seemingly got lost. And we've seen blowing the trumpet, so everybody dances. And it sounds that it's going to be easy, but you get up tomorrow, it's not going to go away. Yeah. You see, the thing is, the thing is le leaders have to be accountable. Unfortunately, the, the, well, first thing, the accountability here is really, really the ultimate accountability to God for your actions. Uh, you'll always be accountable. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. However, there's also accountability even while you're in office well, to the people. Enough. But the thing is, most people come in and go. In all, all, every country in the world, they come in, they make a mess of things, and they, they leave with impunity. There's no sanction for non-performance. Whereas if, you, if a leader was working for in a business, they either get fired or something right. like that. You know, there's, there's a sanction, but there's no sanction here for leaders of a country. But people, people I, I suspect we are susceptible and you know, somebody said to me a while ago, I promised a fool is better than anything else. Mm. I mean, I promise you the world, and um, if you think really, I don't own the world, so I can't give you the world, mm. but it's a promise. It may just happen. So I think um, the utterance is maybe words of comfort to some, but some who sit down and dissect the whole thing will see, well, look, he can't be smart. He can't be making any sense, first of all, because um, you looked at um, GBN, what night it was, and you saw... In Barbados, a gallon of gas was uh, just as expensive as Grenada. In Antigua, it was just mm -hmm. 25 cents less. In St. Lucia, maybe a dollar less. But the point I'm making here is that uh, what 25 cents really, it's a, it, it, you, you, if you put it together and you look at it at one go, it may add up to a lot. But the point I'm making, how much of a difference it is that you would want to say to PPP people X, Y, and Z? The same thing with flour and sugar. Trinidad, I suppose, they have oil, so it's much of it is sub subsidized. But elsewhere... But world food prices are at all-time yeah, high. Yeah. It is not, a, it's not a, a problem that's unique to Grenada because of our system of governance or anything like that. It is a world issue. What we can do is to see what we can do for our country instead of sitting down and moaning and groaning and complaining is get up and do something about it. You know, yeah, and we have the ability do. to do so. I think we have the ability to be very, very much self, self, um, self reliant. You know, in food, certainly, I think we have food, we can do it easily. And in energy, we have to look to alternative energy sources like solar, which we have everything, and wind, and um, encourage that sort of thing, and more water conservation. And I suppose the weather can be better. You said this morning your area was a little cold, I'm still a little surprised. Mm -hmm. 
and I met a farmer coming up from agriculture yesterday. Farmer, he said, excellent weather. I said, I want cricket, so I will prefer more sun. And he says, the garden needs what is happening yeah. now, some hot weather, some cold weather, That's some right. rain. So really and truly, we are extremely blessed in this we, period. We, I mean, when you look at the things. world, we are very blessed. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the, the catastrophes afflicting the rest of the world. What, we, what have we had in the last 50 years, Hurricane Ivan? Just hurricane. That's that's all we've had. Mm -hmm. But we have sunshine every day, rain when, when we need it, an right. odd bit of dry, all right. Mm -hmm. We don't need many clothes because of the climate. We mm -hmm. don't need a big heated homes or even air conditioned homes because of the climate. We don't need a big fancy cars because you're in where to go. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> the, so what the the, the the day to day necessities, the cost of those are very very low. And um, the ability to survive is very easy because you always have you can always pick up a fish air or something else, somebody will help you because of the, the, the society is very small. So it's easy to survive. So we have to capitalize on that. But I think it's made life too easy for us. So therefore we want to reach out for the things that we don't really need. You know, there's a passage in the Bible that says um, we, we, the problem with man is that we, we, we're not satisfied with what we have. Right. You know? <laughs> or in James it says that we, 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 we never get the things that we pray for because when we get the things, we're going to use them for our own selfish ends. Okay? So we have to look at, 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 at using what we have and seeing what we, we as citizens mm. can do to help the country instead of complaining and trying to stir up dissent and so on, get people to work together. Well, I know? think, again, that's what I'm saying. I, I keep asking about the pool of talent in leading. You see, I mean, uh, I often ask that. I mean, to yeah, me, there are more dumb voices than... Mm -hmm in my opinion, yeah. you know, but see, voices of wisdom. Yeah, but see, also in this passage, although the, the leaders must be, uh, they have to give an account, we must support them. We, we mustn't always just criticize, you know. You go to them and make suggestions, help. This is what I'm trying to say. So even if a leader is making a mistake, don't the first thing you don't do, jump in the street and start shouting or getting on the radio and saying impolite things or writing in the newspaper, things that are not so pleasant, you know. Call them. I was reading that um, the great evangelist um, Billy Graham. Okay. He he worked with many presidents of the United States with whom he disagreed vehemently over a lot of their policies, and one of them actually was saved in the end because he kept, you know, trying to support them and show them the right way. So you must also try that. Not everything calls for demonstration. We have to support our leaders. So it's work with our leaders, irrespective of whom they may be. If you try and try again and they take no notice, and they're going off the deep end, well then, I think there comes a point where, yeah. where one has to do something else. Mm -hmm. But certainly one must give, must make the effort first. Yeah. Well, I quite agree with you, but I suppose it's an opportunity now in the world, as you see, as you said a while ago, to um, maybe advocate, be strong advocates, and I think much of it will be heard by leaders, and leaders to come, that uh, the populace is perhaps not that silence that must be taken for granted. No. So it, it sort of sends a message to those who are in charge and those who are aspiring mm -hmm. that um, there must be some justice, there must be fair play. Yeah, we need, we need fair play, but we also need honesty and leadership to the extent that just because someone is against another leader, one leader who's trying to get the hands on the reins of power, you say and do things that mislead the people, and then when you get in, you can't deliver either, but you've just done so to get the reins of, your hands on the reins of power. And then the, in the end result, the, the country suffers. Yeah? We should be educating people into reality. Yeah? Mm. That's the right thing, in my opinion, that we should be doing. <laughs> well, that's a scarce thing, though. Yeah. That's yeah. a very, well, very yeah. scarce thing. I mean, I mean, we know the economic situation. Even yeah. I've heard people who are not supporters of this government saying, you know, boy, them guys have it real hard because... It's, you know, it's a bad time to be running a country, Correct. you know, and that's a reality. But that message should be spread and say, listen, guys, you have to you have to have some um, restraint and understanding of the, tr the true position. You know, and that's the Christian thing to do rather than mislead people. Well, I, I, let's trust that. Uh, I, I usually say to people, I have a great appreciation for the period of Lent as well as the Muslim period of Ramadan because it sets aside a calendar period when they are told that you are encouraged to reflect mm. and to examine and uh, to me as I said I am not 
knowledgeable as you are in no, the Bible, but, but the point that I make to people, mm. uh, it's just like Christmas. Christ could have, let's say he was born in May or April, yeah. but the point that you are recognizing a period of, I would hope, um, a period where you can think about how this whole thing evolved and how your role perhaps might be in this mm -hmm. whole thing. I like it. And yep. uh, I, I would hope that uh, people who practice it would certainly use as much of it just to reflect. I mean, not just on self, but on the wider picture. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, we must also reflect every day and every moment of every day. Well, we it, do it, get carried away too. Yep. And remember, we do get carried away <laughs> too because yeah. you, are, you are oftentimes inspired by people you put trust in. Mm. But as I said, this period now gives you a, a period where you can sit back. I had my belief in you, but let me examine what Jimmy had to say. And you may see flaws, mm. and you may begin to ask more questions. In, in, the, in, in the moment of so-called glory and fame, you sort of believe what maybe the biggest, well, the biggest fish had mm. to say. But really, Andrew, easy making sense on reflection. Yeah, but we must reflect. Yeah, exactly. And we must. The making sense has to be making sense in terms of the 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 um, principles uh, by which we should be governing our lives. That's that's the yardstick, and the principles will be found in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, and so you have, but you have to reflect. What uh, what is my action at any given time mm -hmm. for selfish ends? Or is it really to better those around me? <laughs> now, you know, you have to keep asking that. So if you're going to support a particular organization or make a vote on a particular issue in, in, your, in your club, sports club or what have you, is that for the better, better for the club and the members or is it just because I want it? You have to keep asking and a lot these of things. A, a lot of the world these days is because I want it. It's yeah. because I want it. Yeah. You have to think of the bigger picture. Yeah. Once it's about you, then you can safely say that that is wrong. I, I, wonder, I wonder if there are many people seeing anything wrong once I'm getting. No, I'm, I'm serious, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I, I elf marks myself that I meet people and I say to people, you know, um, um, well, I don't know why I'm not in the position to make final decisions in terms of the bigger picture, but I often listen to people who you expect could well-read, should be well-read, well-versed, mm -hmm. following the news, whether on television or reading newspapers or whatever it is and also Bible based and you know you get a thing from them quick fix how could you do it let's take some money somewhere let's borrow some money well, somewhere let's do something that's quickly true. so you're a contractor you're a builder the money comes you get paid down the road you know and I, and I usually tell people a good example of we single leader is the stadium you know I, I, I'm, I, I am passionate about sport but as I argue to people not only in Grenada in, in most of the in the OECS countries in particular mm. I mean they basically empty the World Cup, it's four years gone, and there's absolutely nothing, and you hear people boasting about this state of the art, and it looks like Wimbledon. I mean, it's never going to be filled, ever. No, and although one can um, um, engage in certain marketing activities to, to bring people in, so, you know, I guess English football clubs could come and practice here during the off-season, you can encourage those sorts of games, you can encourage other cricketing clubs, but how much of that how much you know I think I think I think for me I think stadium is a bad idea well I I, I wanted a smaller one because to me that's I said St. Vincent you look at St. Vincent that, it's that's small but that's all right you see we could have taken the Queen's Park <laughs> right. and done round that Precisely. bit there yeah. but what we've done in, in, in as well we've lost all the other fields that's correct so that's the correct. only recreation fields you have mm -hmm. are Tantine I know they bring back over Trafford which is yeah. really nothing right. it's just a little right. casual thing right. What do you have in St. George's? Precisely. So we've lost all that for the schools where I, I grew up in Queen's Park. Right. Little boy, you know. So you see, uh, that's why I keep saying to people, you know, oftentimes I wonder how many of us go into heaven. Eh? Yeah. You know, I wonder if the devil doesn't have a, a busload that can't perhaps take more. Because, you know, I don't find many of us who obviously should know better and have a better sense of, um, if I may say, providing leadership, do it. I think we do it in terms of if I'm going to make a million here, it must be good. Well, I tell you it what. It must be good. I'm going to make a million. So it's, it is good for everybody else, although they're not going to make anything. What is scary is that we haven't learned our lessons, and I hear people clamoring for certain uh, 
changes in various islands or because of what they can get. These are mm. citizens, mm. you know. We know it was bad, um, things were bad, you know, but at least I was making money. Yeah, that's good. That, that, and that's the bottom line. At least I was making money. Good. We know everything was crumbling around, yeah. the systems were falling yeah. apart mm. and different way of whatever things were happening mm. in whichever part of the world. That's but good. at least I was making money. Mm. So I want to make money, therefore I will support change, you know, that I may make money. You mm. see, that's the, the ego now, mm. the me. And then once you do that, it's wrong. The basis for that decision is wrong. It's fundamentally flawed. Yeah, I, I don't know, but yeah. I trust that um, words of wisdom will begin to tick our hearts or so. soul, and uh, we we'll eventually find I mean, leaders of more sincerity. And you, you know what, Jimmy? What amazes me before we conclude this morning is that in most of these speeches, God is 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 is, is used as the shining light, and yeah. he's with us and he's with everybody. And the words we utter after that, you know, you wonder if really is the same our, God. Our actions do yeah. not, yeah. do not, um, are not in sync mm. with with those words. You know, you're meeting with a prayer and all this, or you're quoting a budget <laughs> speech, some part of the Bible, we are hard pressed, but not defeated. And you think, oh, he's a good Christian. But you know what, what all, that is do, all that is doing is, is trying to, appeal to the Christian community and be said, boy, this is a good man. He's talking about God and they say prayers. So we'll support him. I mean, God right. is just there laughing because yeah. what are you doing with your mama guy and God? And he doesn't like it. Uh, you know, that's yeah. not right. But they think they're getting away with it. But it's, it's completely transparent and obvious mm. and it's going to backfire. Well, it has. I think that's why we are in the yes. trouble we are around yeah. the world because we have confused people so many times yeah. that um, maybe who did it already beyond the day in the great beyond but yeah. we have to pay a price we are yeah. the ones and the same thing with borrowing 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 yes you may have exit the world but who you leave behind either the bank ticket or yeah. they have to pay for it well, someone said to me the weekend we, we should borrow the country should borrow more because the the the, the lenders always forgive the debt and this is somebody who wants is advocating change just because i want to see me prosper Mm -hmm. And the country should borrow more money and go into greater debt so that there could be a change and I could prosper. Well, that's so bad. Yeah, well. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was hearing right there. <laughs> we got to keep talking about it. Yes. You say what a prayer for us before yes. we can do this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. And we ask you for guidance so that we may obey our rulers whom you have set above us. But also. Bring it to them, Lord, those rulers, that they must give an account, an account ultimately to you, so that we can all live and prosper together, so that your kingdom may be established here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks a lot, yeah. Jimmy. Have Thank a good you, day. Yes, have a blessed good to day. have you. And morning, Pastor. We need some. <laughs> bring some breakfast for us, Pastor Stanford. I wonder if you can cook. I've never tasted his hand. Yeah, we we yeah. got to challenge you there, yeah, Pastor yeah. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can put some green fig on the fire. 7.30, we're going to take a break, and we should have with us um, uh, police, in, police Superintendent Trevor Modest. Um, going to join us here this morning, and good to have him. I'm sure he's here. So let's take a break, and we'll be back shortly. Is the second annual Peter Phillips Schools Drum Corps competition in collaboration with Maximalt Friday, April 1st at the National Stadium starting at 2 in the afternoon. Ten secondary schools will be vying to take the title from the 2010 champs St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School. Be there to witness Carriacou Combined, Presentation Brothers College, the Anglican High School, McDonnell College, Mocha Secondary, Westerhall Secondary, the Grenada Boys Secondary School, Happy Hill Secondary, St. John's Christian Secondary School, put on their best display to be crowned 2011 champs. Admission $5 without uniform, $3 with uniform. It's the second Peter Phillips Schools Drum Corps competition at the National Stadium. Friday, April 1st, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Come support your school and drink a Maximold. Action is each and every Tuesday evening from 8 p.m. Join sports enthusiasts, those who play, organize, and follow the game as they discuss the issues that matter most in sports. Relive the action of sports and give your views. So let's make a beat. Sports Forum on GIS TV each and every Tuesday from 8 p.m. If you spend two hours in a room where someone's smoking, you'll inhale the equivalent of four cigarettes. 
My dad shared an office with a chain smoker eight hours a day, five days a week for more than 10 years. Not surprisingly, he died of lung cancer. I've had enough of secondhand smoke. Have you? Take your family and friends out for a treat. Come to Sunset City Food Festival this Saturday and every last Saturday in each month from 5 p.m. Come and enjoy Oil Down, Tanya Log, Manish Waters, Cowskin Sauce, Bakes and Fish Cake, Wild Meat, Fruit Juices and everything local. Come out, meet and greet and have a good time enjoying great local foods in a warm and peaceful environment. Music, a live band. Sunset City Food Festival, Diamond Street, Victoria, this and every last Saturday. I'm looking to see you there. Right, and it's 28 minutes heading to 8, and I'm just told West Indies doing better. They reached three figures, 111 for 9. If they can get another, what, another 50 more, maybe they make a match out of it. Chanda Paul is still there, and again, some people criticize the slowness. But those fellas who bat quickly, uh, they're going back to breakfast already. And the West Indies look like they're going to exit the World Cup as usual in the second round of the tournament. They won it the first two, the first two occasions, and they have not reached the final thereafter. Well, they reached the final in 1985, and thereafter they have not reached the final of Cricket World Cup. Okay, we have with us now Sergeant David Lewis. He has replaced... Superintendent Trevor Modess, and he's from the the RGPF, the Criminal Records Division. And good morning to you, Sergeant. Good to see you. Good morning. All right. I think this is the first time I'm having you on the program. Yes, so that's the first time I've ever been to such program. Okay, so <laughs> good to have you. And I suppose were well, you based in St. George's? Criminal Records Office, St. George's. All right. I suppose you're one of the officers who perform, and we don't see much in uniform. Well, good to have you, certainly, Hope. And how is the superintendent doing, Trevor? Well, he's doing fine. Presently, he's on vacation. Okay. He'll be back sometime in May. Okay. You police officers really get long vacations. Not all the time. Not all the time. We, accum we accumulate it, so therefore, right. when we need it, we take, we take it. Right. I see some times they, they, they take holidays. I hope Trevor is not getting big and they get big. I know Trevor is an athlete who will certainly be working on I'm, I'm sure he's getting ready, not to compete in the call, but his alma mater, SAS. I'm sure Trevor has a great interest in, in the call. He did a wonderful job in Karakou when he was there with the schools, and particularly the athletes in the field events. And may I tell you, he was at Carifta Games, winner for Grenada on about two or three occasions, as well as Godfrey Augustine. I think Godfrey might have won the most medals for Grenada in Carifta Games over a period of time. And uh, Trevor, we wish you well this morning and good to certainly hear that you have having some vacation. Right, criminal records. Do um, you want to give us a sort of introduction into that division? Well, the criminal records office is a branch in the police force which is responsible for forensic investigation within the police force. We are also the branch which is responsible for storing and disseminating statistics. All the statistics which organization have come from the Criminal Records Office. Right, so I suppose once your name, once your name is entered in the police, whether it's a log book for something, there's some record of whoever you are at the Criminal Records Department. Yes. As minor as it may be. As minor as it may be. A traffic accident. Tra with the exception of traffic accident. Uh -huh. All criminal all criminal matters are mm -hmm. stored, but traffic accident are not are not stored. Okay. Even in the case um somebody got killed in the motor In case of manslaughter, uh -huh. motor vehicle accident, yes. Uh -huh. Causing death by by dangerous driving those offense record at criminal records office. But minor offenses are ticketing. Right. Um, motor vehicle accident and such, this is not stored there. It's traffic that is responsible for storing those information. Right. And I suppose the interesting thing about what you just said there, at some point in time, um, your record will be in front of you. Maybe you need an application, you need um, um, to, to apply for foreign um, residency or something of the sort, that comes back in front of you. 
Yes. And it could haunt you in time to come. <laughs> Anything you do as a young person, it reflects on your church, your life. One records remain with them until death. Permanent. Permanent. Right. <laughs> I suppose, um, how long have you been in that department? This year will be 20, 20 years since I'm at the criminal, in criminal, criminal records office. Yeah. Uh, how much is this of a challenge? Well, it's very challenging at times, especially when you have serious crimes. And you cannot make any headway, you know, it's real challenging. Is it getting easier? We are forensic now. I know Trevor, Superintendent Modest, is one of the experts in the Caribbean. He's written a, a wonderful book that is used in, well, some, uh, he's written some, is it chapters or a book? Which one? Some uh, chapters. It's a chapter. Right, that I, I notice uh, they use that various colleges in the region. Uh, with that kind of expertise available to you and to the force, is it making it any easier or the, or the work is just as challenging as it well, always? It, it remains challenging because every step we go, every time we move forward, the criminal move, move with us. <laughs> so it's very, it remains challenging at all times. Yeah, I suppose here again that um, um, the, the, the technology that is available to makes things well, it certainly accommodates you to, it facilitates you to, but the, but the criminals, obviously, yes. they have made use of it as efficient as you have. Yeah, they also make use of it. And some of the technology which is available to the other, to the other countries, we are not in possession of it. So that makes our work even harder. The, the, the challenge in terms of the CID would be, what are some of the two or three, let's say three of the major challenges in terms of criminal activities on the island? Well, the major challenges we have presently are offenses against the persons. For example, housebreaking and stealing. This is one of the most prevalent crimes presently. We have a few problems with regards to harm offenses. The minor harm offenses, these are some of the problems. And the third one which we have presently, um, a jog the drug problem. This is one of the problems we have presently. This is not going away. It's very hard to go away. I suppose the temptation of rich, of, 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 of becoming wealthy without doing much. I think that could be one of the problems. Yeah. Because when you think on the way you have to work hard to get a living and you could make it easier, some people it's tempted to go the easier way. But the consequence is you being there when you get caught is that regrettable. The consequences are regrettable, but so long as you keep getting money, most times they don't think about the consequence. The only time they consider it is when they're in custody. But apart from that, all they see is getting the money. Let me ask you, um, we're not gonna, I'm not ask you to call him, but I suppose you would have interrogated people who do these things. And I suppose um, clearly you've been caught in the cookie jar, so you, you can't escape. Um, are some of these people very repentant, sorry, or they, you know, they do it out of innocence, or it is well planned, it is designed to, just for me and me to achieve what I desire? Well, there are some who appear to be repentant at times. You know, they show remorse whenever they get it served out, but there are others who show no remorse. It's like a normal way of life. You catch me today, I continue tomorrow, and it continues over a period of time. Uh, I, I suppose they would obviously be those who would say, look, we can outsmart the police at any time. We can, I suppose, um, find ways of, if not outsmarting them, keeping them at bay. Yes, because there are some, when you get in contact with them, they tell you, you do your job, you know, and I do in mine. They claim this it is how, job. Yeah, this is how I make a living. I will do mine and you continue doing yours. You know, I have no problem with regards to that. Some will tell you that. With regards to the drug offenses, you are there to do yours and I'm doing mine. I suppose marijuana remains the major drug that is used in the country. Yeah, marijuana is the major drug that is being used. And, and um, the age group that we perhaps are challenged the most, um, under 25, um. under 20, 40 and over, age group that you 
perhaps on the record showing that look here is the biggest challenge here is where the society social services other NGOs who community groups uh, their particular age group that is seemingly where the challenge is under 30 under 30 that's where most of the challenges come from both men and women um, basically more men, more men. Jog is mo basically more men that is involved. With regards to our record, the women may be involved undercover, but the men are the ones who are in the forefront. Um, oh, what are some of the things that surprise you in this uh, department being there for 20 years? Um, I'm asking that because sometimes you're in a job and you confront individuals who ought to know better. You assume they're knowledgeable, you have respect for them. And then you're surprised by his or her behavior. Are there things being in that area that over the years were upset, if not shock you, but surprise you? Some of the people who are involved in the serious crime, when you get in contact with the smaller, smaller ones, the other people who are involved, these are some of the things that surprise me. However, most time you do not have any evidence in which you could charge these people. But Talking with the people involved, these are some of the things that surprise me. I'm just telling you that West Indies all out for 112 in 43.3 overs. Very easy going for Pakistan there if they wish to win. China Paul not out on 43. And uh, uh, <laughs> is it a freebie? Picking up 4 for 13, 9.3 overs. Uh, pretty easy going for Pakistan. You didn't have to work to, to win that. Um, we, I think the word people use sometimes, cracking a case. Um, uh, we have cyber crimes these days. So which are the cases perhaps um, are most difficult to crack these days? Um, your superintendent was here at one point and he was saying to, uh, to me that um, people basically plan that, look, the police may come after me. So here, how is that? I'm going to exit myself? So you find difficulties in getting fingerprint because they use whatever they have to use. And uh, basically they cover the tracks well. So are there crimes that are more difficult to confront than others? So basically some of the most difficult crimes to solve are the breaking offenses. Sometimes most time you go on a crime scene and you don't get any fingerprint whatsoever. And there is nothing remain for you to work with. House breaking. Mm -hmm. These are this is one of the most serious crime to crime. So some of our criminals are that sophisticated that you can't. They know that let's get rid of a fingerprint or use whatever it takes to avoid that clue from from the police. Yes, and most occasion these are the problem we have. Because as technology increases, they look at the TV and they get all means of protecting the crime scene when they go. However, sometimes they may not leave fingerprint, but, but they leave other evidence. But for example, if they leave shoe impression, they may as well as get rid of the evidence before the police get in contact with them. Um, citizens, are we helpful in helping you? Uh, we become more selfish and more protective and individualistic and in the past, 25 years ago, people would have been, well, let's say 20, you started 20 years ago, people have been, look, willing to discuss with you privately or otherwise. Are we as citizens helpful to the RGPF? Because we want you to start off crime, we complain, they're on the radio, we're talking. Are we have a, you have a helpful population? Some are helpful to the, pop, to the police. Others are not. Basically, I would say that Generally, we, the citizens are helpful to the police, generally. Whenever they hear anything, although they may not want to disclose the name, they will always call us and give us the information, generally. All okay, right, so Grenadians have remained a helpful, a helpful source in helping to solve crime. Yes. Well, I'm glad to hear, hear that because oftentimes you listen that so much crime and there is no conviction and I suppose the only how you can get conviction is if you have evidence. If you have evidence. Yeah, without that. Without the evidence, there is no conviction. Suspicion is no evidence. Suspicion is What no you evidence. think is no evidence. You have to produce the evidence in court, and then you have a conviction. 
something may happen and people will share their different opinion as to what they feel about the whole incident. But when the matter reach before the court, what people think does not matter. It's to present the evidence in court, then you get a conviction. And that's the only thing the judge would listen to? This is what is considered. Right. What is before the court, not what is outside there. <laughs> no easy part? No easy part. Uh, let's put it this way. This area of policing you really enjoy? Yes, I enjoy it. You wouldn't give it up for any other department? You know you can't be transferred. But well, the work is transferable mm. and I'm prepared to work in any department. But you really like but this? But I enjoy working within the plainclothes branch. Alright. And CID and CRO. C what is CRO? Criminal Records okay. Office. That's where I'm attached to. So but CID and CRO. CID and CRO. The yeah. CRO is a, it's an, it's a branch which fall under CID. Mm -hmm. So our main function is crime scene investigation, gathering forensic evidence and stuff like that. Forensic evidence? Um, Fingerprint. What, right. Um, a biological evidence that when you go and crime, trace evidence. Here, yeah, fibers and those stuff. Blood, the, we are the department that responsible for collecting those evidence and crime scene. A lot of training, I suppose, yeah, taking same. place for the officers. Uh, ever so often, we get foreign courses mm -hmm. with regards to those stuff. The criminals are moving so quickly. Um, you think, I don't want to say you think anymore. I, um, keeping up with them must be a huge challenge for our GTPF. Yeah, it's a great challenge to keep up with the criminal. Because as I said previously, when you make one step, they make another one in front you. So by the time you get catch up with them, they change the method of operation. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I want to thank you, David, for dropping by this morning. I hope um, um, we could continue to enjoy some of the successes that you're talking about in solving crime. We certainly want a world without crime and a Grenada without crime, but I know that is impossible. Uh, I suppose some of our people enticed to get to heaven via the easy route and get to the riches of the world via the easy route. And uh, with that temptation, I suppose we will always have people wanting to do the wrong thing and therefore providing you with a challenge. Well, the challenge always is there. And we always try to see how we could get rid of crime, but as you see, it is hard to get rid of crime. We always we try to minimize it, but crime is something which you cannot get rid of. There will always be crime. But we're working to see how we could minimize it and at the same time trying to see how we could solve the crime which are committed. And look how the police are watching you from many angles, plain clothes and otherwise. David, good to have you this morning. All right, thank you. Best wishes. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Does bad weather bring back flashes of the past? Does depression and feelings of hopelessness make you want to give up on life? Does uncontrollable anger, frustration and stress push you to commit violent crimes? It's okay to be scared. You're not losing your mind. Suicide is such a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once you go down that road, there's no turning back. When tempers flare, think twice, walk away. Let's all get involved. Talk to someone today about the way you feel. Call the Legal Aid and Counseling Clinic or the Ministry of Social Services. A message from the Wellness Committee. You got him? All right, and uh, Dwayne, good morning, Dwayne. I suppose I had to call you because, um, um, well, I didn't expect much more, I must tell you flat out. So I'm not in any way um, deceived by what um, the scores are. Well, the score is 112 all out. And uh, Dwayne, any chance of West Indies winning this game, Dwayne? I don't think so. Um, Pakistan will have to do a lot worse than us. <laughs> um, but really, I think it came down to which team or teams turned up this morning. And judging from the first dismissal of Chris Gale, um, one could have seen that this was the poor West Indies team. So I think that that really set the tone for this innings. And uh, there was no coming back from there. So a lot of questions would be asked now, but certainly you cannot make 112 runs in a quarterfinal and then expect to win unless the other team um, plays worse than you. Well, Dwayne, I don't know, but you know Otis Gibson. I would hope they fire Otis Gibson as quickly as possible. This guy doesn't seem to have much talent, in my opinion, as a coach. 
uh, we, John Dyson might have had this problem, but you could have seen our West Indies team shaping. I mean, where where we get this guy? I mean, this guy seemingly has a pack of cards, and he shuffles the pack of cards, and whoever comes up plays. I, I have seen no common sense from the first match to this, the exit match. Help me to understand his thinking. You perhaps know him better than me, and you play cricket, so people like me who have not played at the level you have played at, give me a guidance as to how is this man thinking. Well, it's, I don't think it's fair to blame the coach only. I think I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying that he seems a man lack of any vision. Uh, obviously, he's not on, on, on the field, but, I mean, you look at Australia, you could see a set pattern. Today, Chandler Paul plays. You see, the last match, you had seven bowlers. I mean, half of them can't bat. I mean, how do you sit in a thing and pick a team like that? There's a wicketkeeper who can't even bat. I mean, how do a coach with any talent or any vision bring Devon Thomas? I mean, this morning, I was in the bathroom. <laughs> And I just happened to, I, I thought it was a six. And I then got to realize it's him, he's out. So I'm asking, what is the talent in this gen gentleman that I haven't seen that maybe you can help me appreciate? Yeah, obviously there were some, uh, you know, poor decisions made by the, the management team, comprising of the captain, coach, whatever. Um, but I think um, you have to look at the balance of the team. And if you have someone like Darren, Sammy, captain in, um, he hasn't really produced the goods, so I think he had to play. So I think that would have really upset the balance in terms of leaving out Chandler Paul for the last two matches. Had Chandler Paul been there, certainly the West Indies would have won the match against India and maybe the match against England. But he wasn't there. They decided to go in with the extra bowler. Having said that, the bowlers really did the job. Um, you must commend the bowlers because before this tournament, we all said that the bowling um, was going to be very weak. But the bowlers have done well, including your man, Ravi Rampal, um, who got a five-wicket haul in the last match. But because Darren Sammy had to play, he's not contributing with the bat, he's not contributing with the ball, um, that would have upset the balance of the team. Um, that match against, um, I think it was England, when we sent in Sammy at three and Devon Thomas at number five, I don't know um, <laughs> what was he thinking in that particular match. So certainly the tactics you know, went all wrong in that particular game. Um, today, I think they got it right to some extent in terms of bringing in Chandler Paul. Um, but when you leave out someone like, like Russell, who really had performed well with the ball and the bat, you know, you've got to ask some questions. I don't think that Devon, Devon Thomas should have been playing in this game. Perhaps they could have gone with someone like um, Bravo to keep it and perhaps bring in Russell, who can give you some runs lower down the order. But having said all of that, Ray, um, this performance here has nothing to do with Otis Gibson. This was a poor batting performance all along, starting from the top, um, Chris Gill, and then Sawan. Darren Bravo hasn't gotten many runs since that innings, the first match against South Africa when he got 73. Um, so it's not really fair just to blame the coach, <laughs> but I think um, we are in a league probably below um, these seven teams, we are probably in a league with Bangladesh and the, and the Minnows as well. Well, I don't know about you, but I think this is the worst of the worst we have ever had as a leader. I am inspired by people who lead me, uh, although I'm not blind, but I mean, I can't see how anybody could have a dumb coach as we have right now and do any better. I mean, uh, you have to admit it. I mean, look at England is losing, are they winning or whatever. But the West Indies have no pattern. I mean, first of all, the selection of this team. I'm asking, what, normally coaches have an influence. You see, look, these are the people I would want you to pick from. I mean, you look at, where is Scott Edwards doing in this country? Then? What is he doing? He has never really, I mean, done anything of significance to be where he is. Um, Ram Dean may be out of form, but an out of form Ram Dean is certainly more helpful as far as I'm concerned than an informed Devon Thomas. His scores are bingo numbers. So I think um, we have to throw a lot of the blame on a group of uh, selectors that lack talent, a coach that is uninspiring, and we must not, exi you know, don't, don't blame the players. The people who lead them must take some blame. They must take a lot of the blame or all the blame. In Brazil, who they fired? The coach. They fired the coach. So I think um, we in the Caribbean ought to take responsibility at the highest le level. And if we like the English and perhaps the Americans, we would quit. But I suppose he will stay on and sympathy and we would hope that um, to blame some players, Chandler Paul batting too slow. And, 
But Dwayne, uh, who are you going to pick to win the World Cup now? Well, I always uh, my view. But um, anyone can win really at this stage, the quarterfinal stage. These were the teams I expected to get to the quarterfinal stage. So, so far it has gone according to plan. Pakistan looks good, but I believe they are very similar to us. They can have, you know, they have many more bad days than good ones. They're having a good day today. So I will still stick with either um, Sri Lanka or India. But that match with, with India Australia. and Australia is almost like a mini final because, um, you know, those two teams probably wouldn't have expected to play one another so early in the, in the piece. I believe the Indians were thinking they would have topped their group and the Australians were thinking they would have topped the group. So that is going to be a very interesting game. Your team, Ray, England, England, I don't think will get there. I don't think they can handle the likes of Malinga, Mendes, and Merlitteran. So I don't think that they will get there at all. Saturday, you're going to be at the park. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow about your grassroots program. We're going to be at the park, and I don't bet, but if I win, I hope you provide me lunch. I'm not talking about Kentucky Fry. I'm talking about a decent vegetable lunch. So that's a promise. If I win... You owe me lunch. <laughs> don't yeah, I, I, do it. I don't have to worry about that, Ray. I'm, I'm confident. I have I'm two of your colleagues. That, um, that England would not, not get there. They cannot beat Sri Lanka. I have two of your people from the colleges from Tam CC with me here this morning, Mrs. Benjamin, and one of the students, Keishan Paul. So they're listening to you, and I know you keep a promise. But don't worry. England can creep out. Don't, don't worry. I'm not putting more money in England at the same time. I must tell you this. But I believe this thing has been so tipsy, Toby. I think England will win. I just feel so. Thanks, thanks a lot, Dwayne. Bye-bye. I remember when this beach was really wide, a place to picnic and play cricket. Mm, and we used to go up to the end to get away from all the people. Now all the beach gone. Coastal erosion. When the sea starts to come in and take the land away, everyone loses something. Granny, look how the waves are washing right under that hole. Coastal erosion. It's a hazard. <laughs> Hazards. Take control. Reduce your loss. What can you do to help stop coastal erosion? For one, don't drive four-wheel vehicles on seaside dunes. They loosen sand and destroy binding vegetation, causing erosion. Find out more about coastal erosion and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from your national disaster office and Sidera. It is 8 o'clock, and we're going to go on to Tam CC Wednesday morning. We, we get an insight into the uh, TMI Asher Community College. We've been looking at various departments and the opportunities that are available to you, Grenadians, and it has nothing to do with age group. You could be, you could be 18, you have your 3CXC, and you can uh, be part of this program. You could be 40, and you have the qualification, or you want to enhance your capacity. There is a multiplicity of um, programs there so you can certainly benefit and today we're going to take you into the electrical technology department and we have with us a student Keishan Paul. Uh, Keishan is one of our better table tennis players and uh, certainly a player of great talent and I understand also one of the better students in the electrical department and we have the head of the department with us Miss Patricia Benjamin. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mr. Roberts. Good to see you. Good, good to have you. A good week so far? Yes, yes, yes it is. All right, mm. all right. Well, I was saying to her a while ago, generally, when you say electrical and technology department, you look for a male. And here is a female turning up, and it shows how much the world is changing. If that's so true. As a female in the electronics department, there I am enjoying it. Let me go back a little because I started since I was going to secondary school where I wrote GC and from GC I went on to the technical college and it was kind of, you know, it was only three of us female in the three females, three females in the class, yes. but the males take care of us. It was a challenge, but we went through with them and we were with them working at the same par with them, whatever it is. So, you know, working in this area as a female, it, I know it's a challenge, but I am prepared to go with it and to make, to respond as I am asked. Well, you have excelled, and that's no doubt about uh, it. Yeah. And it's good to have you, and I uh, suppose it's 
um, the transition we talking about gender balance, providing both male and female with the opportunities to grow in each other in, in whichever profession they may choose. Yes, and also let me go a little further. I was encouraged because previously I don't know if you know UNESCO used to be looking at programs where you had the you were looking at females getting into these traditional um, careers mm -hmm. and at that stage getting that support from UNESCO, I said, okay, I'm going the right way as one of the female, to show females that we can do it. Good. Although we might not, I'm not looking at the makeup of mm. our human body, but when it comes to the career, mm. we can ch do the same thing that the men are doing. And in some areas, excel over it too. Right. Kishan, so I suppose you are <laughs> one of the beneficiaries of Ms. Benjamin, professional. Sir. Talent and um, exciting classes. Yes, sir. Those classes are, are very um, exceptional. The points they are they are very um, educational and exhilarating, depending on your perspective of the class. So, good. Well, let me go back to Miss Benjamin so she yes. can introduce us to the department. Uh, I'm sitting home. I have mm -hmm. an interest in technology. It's a Caribbean world that is coming competitive. You can't just say I'm good at it. You have to be certified and the certification begins with some acknowledgement yeah. from the college. So introduce us to your department. How yes, can get there? the electrical electronics department, we, within our department we have four programs. You have electrical, in, electrical engineering technology, we have the um, electric, electronics engineering, air condition and refrigeration, and the, we also have computer system engineering. Those are the four programs we have in our department. The engineering courses, they are all associate degree courses, whereas the refrigeration course is a level two certificate course. For a person to get into the electrical electronics department doing the associate degree programs, they must have at least four subjects, GC or CXC, with English being mandatory. Also, what will assist them if they, they let us say they, are want, they want to go into the electronics engineering area and electrical, physics and science is an asset. Mm -hmm. And that will enhance, when they enhance the person when they get into the field. With the refrigeration, three subjects is, that will be the entry requirement with English also, mandatory. And then there's also the opportunity that it, you can do the English or what you don't yes, have during... Yes, but what we are saying now, mm. uh, they're saying it is mandatory, you must have the English. Okay. Good? Because going in, that's the requirements of right. the college. That's the entire requirements of the college. When an applicant is applying, they must that's have something. English. Whereas with the mass, which some, some people might say, yes, why not mass? Because it's an engineering area. If you don't have the maths, you can do it with the SCE, the School of Continue. Continuing Education. Yeah. You have access to that. Previously, we were not we used to be taking students who do not have the English, and you will put them on and allow them to do it during the time at the college. But some of them passed. Some of them go ahead and but some people just were waiting for the entry into the college and just. Miss, I will do it when you do the interview with them, and then when they get in, they said, okay, Miss, I can't afford to do it, or they just forget about it, just use that of getting in. But now it is mandatory that you must do, must have the English. Right. And if you don't pass the English, uh, you can really allow you. You will not get the associate degree. Yeah, I, well, I am not going to go into that aspect right. of it, good, because you can, but I think there is some requirements you have to meet before it. Right. yeah good so um uh -huh. kishan you're one of the students in the class and i suppose you this is your second year you second year yes sir all right so you going on any particular area which area are you in we spoke about the refrigeration i'm in the electrical engineering technology department so you're doing the associate yes sir all right and um um, let me ask you a, a couple of questions. Is it male dominated or mixed? Yes, years? yes. The, um, the, actually, the whole class is comprised of male. The gender is male. Is male. So everybody within the class is our male individuals. Okay. Um, 
Um, there was a young man here from another class recently. Same complexion with you. I'm trying to remember his name, but I can't remember his name. I think, in uh, any case, he was one of those contestants in the um, Mr. Tam CC show. Okay. Had a tomahawk. Okay. Is it tomahawk you call it? Uh, yes, mohawk. Uh, mohawk. Oh, mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is the president of the SRC. Uh, SRC. Right. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. He's also in that department? Well, no, sir. No, he's, he's not in, in He's doing a mechanic. He's in mechanic the mechanic. Mechanic engineering, engineering that's department. Correct. And I was going to ask you, you're going to go on to further education after this? Or? Yes, so My hopes are to further my education in electrical engineering, so because based on my research, it has seen that the people may say that the market is quite saturated, mm -hmm. but however, if one is able to penetrate a, penetrate a specific area of the market, mm -hmm. there is some, from, some uh, opportunity of receiving an income or revenue based on your skills. I may say it because I, in electrical engineering, there are different aspects of electrical engineering. Like you can go into control systems, um, you can go into transformer systems, or you can even go into motor systems or electrical machines. So, so therefore, there is um, the wide opportunities for an electrical engineer with an associate degree to actually penetrate the market and, and receive some form of revenue based on their skills. So actually, you have done your little research before. Yes, Was sir. this a career goal or are you? got into TAM CC and decided, look, this is what I'm going to try, or this is, was a pre-planned thing from since you were at PVC? Oh, well, so at my former years at PVC, well, we started at Form 1 and Form 2, so my goal was mostly to become an economist. But at Form 3, when I was introduced to electrical, electronic and electrical technology at Form 3, which was offered for CXC, so I realized that I was quite mesmerized by electrical fundamentals and principles, as well as certain aspects of the electrical engineering field. So I decided that I would do subjects based on what my goal would be to become an electrical engineer and as a result I did more technical subjects at CXC so I did so I like broaden my foundation to become an electrical engineer. Hence uh, the reason why I went into TAM CC and did electrical engineering. The experience there in line with your vision back then at PVC you go into the unknown what what you uh, in now it sort of fit into what you had anticipated well so it's quite it's even more the foundation which i was hoping to achieve was actually has actually been broadened because at times you see i was hoping for a firm foundation in electrical engineering stuff like motor system control systems as i mentioned before however the, the, the um, college also offers areas with associate degree yeah there's a, a um, reaching hand into english communications plumbing systems um, entrepreneurial skills, um, social skills, critical reasoning. These are areas which can help to formulate some form of idea in which an individual can start their own business or have be, be having relational skills with clients or even being able to reach into other technical areas such as plumbing so that actually broadens your foundation and your understanding of electrical engineering without actually um, diverging away from the main goal of becoming an engineer. Right, and uh, I suppose the Based on what you have said, you're very pleased with the tutoring, the teachers, not teachers, the lecturers, the facilitators. You yes, sir. I'm, I'm very pleased with, with them because, first of all, the college also uh, makes provision for lecturers to come in and, and individual, individuals from the actual field of engineering to come in and share their experiences or their knowledge based on what they have learned in the field and the experiences in the field. So, therefore, it kind of gives you an ability to focus on what they expect in the field and an ability to actually be able to utilize your skills based on their experiences so you may be able to learn from the mistakes so they pass it down onto you so that you will not make that exact mistake good student yes let me reinforce what kishan was saying just now in the electrical electronics department presently we have 102 students, 102 students. only four female <laughs> And do, and we effort in the first year we have one female electrical student. In the second year there is no female electrical student. And why I'm saying this is because you know fem I am um, I, I try to when to talk to the females especially we have for the last interview we had about three of them came, but after then they remo they did not come back for the final interview. But there is one, and I am still happy because when I came, there was no female, and I think we are going to rise. I still have that belief that they will get more females.
Yes, then talking about the uh, Kishan as a good student. Kishan is on the dean's list. Okay, congratulations. That, yes, and when I say the four, dean's four list... 4.0? <laughs> well, above 3.5. Uh, so. so he's above yeah, that. There is another student who was supposed to be here too, but he took ill this morning, Mr. Ashford. He's also one of the electronic students who is on the dean's list. Um, the program of itself, the associate degree program in electronics, electrical, and um, engineering, con and computer engineering, these programs, when these students are finished at the college, they are doing both the practical and theory, so that when they go out there, they are not going, f let us say, with all the knowledge, but they are, they, let us say, they are at a level where they can function with what the in, with industry, with the employers, and the standards that the employers are looking for. They are able to put out their works with so supervision. You, you mentioned practical. So yeah. during the two-year period, the department will arrange with some institution or some firm or some individual where these, well, trainees or these students can go to see the practical work. What I will, what happened? Well, let us say they, they do practical at the college. Okay, so they're, they're practical yes, they are practical the because when in his, you could, in his first year, they do strictly electrical installation, like domestic installation. Mm -hmm. Where Kishan presently, I sure as I am speaking, he can go out there and do wire at two bedroom domestic dwelling. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, when they finish their first year, that is our objective. So. When they go into the second year now in the associate degree program, they are going to focus more on the industrial aspect of electrical. So it's not just it's only... Not a theory program. No, it has both the practical and theory. Moving on, Kishan mentioned about the instructors coming in. We are bringing people from industry to come in and sh as guest lecturers so that they can share their experience with the students so the students will already have a feel of what is expected of them when they go out there. So these are the things the college is doing so as to enhance the program and to market our students in a more professional way, in a way that industry will say yes, the college is doing something and we are what in partnership then with the industry very and, proud of your class and what is it you're very proud of your yes i am i am students? yes they are good students putting them out there and we know that ch as as a, it, a let us say as a, in, a teacher for the past 30 years mm -hmm. we do meet with challenges with our students but i think when they go out there some of them will see that it is not just me, but I have to do my work so that I, the person that I am working for could recognize me, not only as an electrician, but also selling the product with a good attitude, and I am marketable. Not only as an electrician, but I am marketable in both my attitude and also my profession on the whole. We have, as he also mentioned about the other courses, um, courses that they do because in the associate degree you have related courses and general ed courses. The related courses are the courses that they must pass with a minimum of C. C. The general ed courses which you will as Kishan talk about some of the entrepreneurial skills they do. They, these are some of the courses that will enhance them as they go out there as even as they get in to their own business, become self-employed, they will be able to communicate, they do um, com English communication again. So these are courses that will enhance them and we are not, as I will mention again, we are not just training electricians, we are training the old person. So when they go out there, they, could, they are able to function in society, they are able to sell their products, sell themselves, get employed and even further their education in a higher institution. Right. So the program is a well-rounded program. Does it cater to people who are not his age? You're 30 already, but you want to enhance your capacity. You want to become more marketable. So yes, we do. Yeah, so because, opportunities to people. Yeah, because there are some electricians who are out there. Take, for example, presently, well, the associate degree program only started last year. Kishan is one of the first recipients of that program. Okay, so so we used to be doing the level two certificate. Mm -hmm. 
And there are people who are coming back, electricians who are out there to upgrade themselves. Good? So there is no age barrier. Good. You come, well, okay, you have your level two, then you have a recommendation from your employer, and we interview you, and then we look at the programs that you are missing, and you are enrolled into these programs. So if there are electricians out there, they want to come in and upgrade their qualifications, no problem. Good. It is open to them. And we want to encourage as many people as possible because clearly, as I said, it's an open market, Caribbean single market. So yes. there's no, uh, you can't stop people from coming to compete with Kishan or whoever <laughs> it is in particular areas. And the only way you can survive it is certifying your skills and you have the capacity. So here's the opportunity from yes. Camp CC. And um, Kishan, I suppose, um, when are you going to get back playing? I haven't seen you play for a little while. Well, sir. This one, uh, my current state of, um, so I, I have a lot of workload because I'm in my more or less last semester okay. before internship, so there is a heavy workload upon me. So, right. so anytime I'm ready, I'll come back and play. Well, I hope you make a program, take a two hours on Saturday, and you know, you're going to make some money. It's an area <laughs> that we always need people like you to do. You're going to make some money, uh, but keep a little physical, as Dr. Johnson was telling us yesterday. Yes, sir. Um, you know, see many when people leave schools in Grenada, leave school in Grenada, or college or what have you. Well, I suppose you have to earn a living, you have to do things, so the physical side of life become less important than the money-making side of life, but then you have to spend the money back to the doctor. Yeah, health. That's, that's right. Yeah. So keep it balanced. Well, I want to thank you, Ms. Benjamin, but and you for dropping that. You want to say? Yeah, yeah, I wanted just to say something more about the refrigeration program. Okay. Because we have a refrigerator, the level two certificate program where the NOU, the National Ozone Unit, is right. sponsoring the, the students. They are giving us scholarship. Leslie Smith. Yes, Mr. Leslie Smith. Right. And we are looking out for the young Grenadians to take up this opportunity because the ozone unit, they pay your tuition fee, they buy your your t-shirts, they look after the, the only thing that they do not do is to pay your transportation. So I am asking the young people who are interested in becoming refrigeration technicians, there is an opportunity for you. Take it up now and tell us is the application period you have to apply between I suppose May the, and June. Yes. The, uh, right the, now they you have a department that we call PICA which is responsible for synthesizing the students about what is going on and how they could get into the college. And they are going around from to schools and the secondary schools telling the students what they have to do. But you can also come into the college and then we can also brief you on what to do. They can come in and go to the admission department. If they're interested in the electrical electronics department, this area, they speak to the admissions or even come to Mrs. Benjamin. I will give them a brief rundown on what is expected right. and so on. And if you see Kishan, you can mm -hmm. ask him a question or two. Yes, th that's true. He's a good marketer for the program. Mm -hmm. Well, good to have you. Good to see you. And um, as I said, I haven't it's had a knock with you for a long time. <laughs> uh, these are the young people that are uh, well, beating us now, but I suppose you have to accept it at some point in time. Thanks, Tam CC, for coming this morning again. And as I said, the whole objective of this exercise on a weekly basis is to introduce you to the areas of opportunities at the at Tam CC, T. Marshall Community College. And again, we want to impress upon everybody in Grenada within the working age, see it as a wonderful thing and a challenge that you should accept. People from all over the region are going to be here competing with you, and there's nothing the country can do to stop it because it's a single market. Let's take a break. 20 past the hour. We'll be back. If you spend two hours in a room where someone's smoking, you'll inhale the equivalent of four cigarettes. My dad shared an office with a chain smoker eight hours a day, five days a week, for more than 10 years. Not surprisingly, he died of lung cancer. I've had enough of secondhand smoke. Have you?